I'm Dr. Joel Graff. This is a follow-up to the video describing basic PCR primer design. This will be PCR primers for using in recombination-based cloning. So a lot of this is just maintained from the previous video. So if you haven't watched that yet, you should watch the previous video. The main difference in this experiment, or in these primers, are that the primers have two different components to it. You ha still have what I call the gene-specific portion uh, to it, um, there in orange and also here in orange. But you, al you also design in extra bases at the five prime end of your oligo that do not match up with any sequence here that you're wanting to amplify, but instead are designed so that you get custom custom sequence added on to each end of your uh, PCR product. So over here the sequence is shown in green so that's going to be adding green sequence to your primer or your PCR product. Over here this reverse primer is black and then it goes into orange. Notice on both cases the custom sequence is at the five prime end of the primer. The three prime end of the primer is the gene specific portion because of course the whole point of a primer is to provide a three prime hydroxyl for the polymerase to come down, bind, and follow, create the next strand of DNA. So in both cases, the extra sequence you want is at the five prime end of your uh, primer and then you have the gene specific portion at the three prime end. The sequences, when we designed this sequence, we, we noted that this sequence here in orange matches this sequence here that is the top strand sequence. However, the sequence at the end of your gene or whatever length of DNA you're trying to amplify uh, is going to uh, be this strand is what you're going to have, you need to get the reverse complement. Same thing is true for this extra sequence. You are designing the custom sequence here, but it's going to be the reverse complement to the these whatever will be the top strand sequence at the end of your gene here so it'll be the three prime end of your top strand. These colors are indicating green and black. Those are color coded to match up with a plasmid sequence. So let's say you have a plasmid with a restriction site right here and we cut open this DNA uh, with that, with that uh, plasmid, then you can take this sequence and put it over here and what you'll notice is that I'm only going to draw a single stranded here, uh, but you'll have your, this, your green sequence followed by your PCR product sequence followed, or your, the, the gene or whatever it is you're trying to amplify sequence for, for cloning, and then it'll end with the custom uh, black sequence. So you will, if you take this digested plasmid, mix it with your PCR product that has the custom sequence at each, the five prime, and, uh, at this end and this end, upstream and downstream of your gene, you can get recombination, which is just shown here with X's. Uh, this sequence matches this sequence. This sequence happens to match that sequence. Let me draw that a little bit better. It's going to recombine with this sequence here and it'll pop your gene into the uh, reaction. One thing I want to, as long as I'm talking about the recombination reaction, um, the kit that we use says to set up a 20 microliter reaction where you mix a certain amount of your gene, uh, PCR product that's going to be cloned into the plasmid. You mix the PCR product, the plasmid, and some enzymes together. 
they say 20 microliters and I do not want anyone to be doing that because you end up only using two microliters gets used to transform into bacteria so sh uh, shoot for a six microliter reaction and if you need help on that of course come and talk to me but please do not set up 20 microliter reaction it's way too expensive hope this makes sense over here, just adding extra sequence to your PCR primer. After a few rounds of PCR, this flanking sequence uh, that was shown in the purple will become irrelevant and you'll end up with this PCR product being the dominant DNA species in your reaction.